This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. With drag and drop templates, spend less time on a website and more time on your art. If you ask me how I shot Anamorphia, I would tell you with story in mind. If you ask me how I shot Anamorphia almost entirely by myself, simple. I built the right tool. This may not look like much, but this is the key to it all. 19 volts, 2.53 amps. We'll come back to that. Now, truth be told, movies these days don't need complicated equipment. You can film a movie with just an ordinary camera, a microphone, and maybe a monitor. Technically, what we're building is a battery-powered audio mixing boom arm with dual monitor video village, dedicated DIT station, and an optional camera dolly. AKA, I'm gonna need every thing in this box. Avenger Roller Stand 17, 26.5 pound capacity with max height of eight feet and a collapsible base. Best of all, brakes. At the base is my two-year-old field recorder, the Mix Pre 10T. The T stands for time code. It's complete overkill for just a YouTuber with 12 possible channels, unless of course you plan on filming a movie in the future. One of the main features I like is the time code generator and the sync options, as well as a left and right balanced outputs. If I was starting from scratch, I would go with the Mix Pre 62. Pro tip, any hardware mounting issues can be overcome with hose clamps. Now, because we're loading this thing up, we need to add a little weight to the base just to keep it from toppling over. Plus, it kind of looks like a set of testicles. Six inch jaw vice grip, check. Atomo Shogun Inferno monitor plus external recorder. 10-bit HDR monitoring with 1500 nit brightness, balance XLR inputs and record up to 4K60 with ProRes RAW, ProRes or DNX HD. I can import my S-Log2 or Blackmagic color grades and make perfect exposures off the final look. And now to power it all. You remember these guys. Indie Pro Micro Series Lithium Ion Battery. This brick will power the Black Magic and the Ronin for two weeks. That's another exaggeration. Yeah, you're probably right. So most V-mounts only have one D-tap port, so we'll need some help. Power cable, Atomos Shogun. That's helpful. And a four port D-tap expander. I can power up to four devices as long as I have enough amps. So the power cable to the MixPre 10T is like ridiculously long. How to solder. Step one, grab one of these. Step two, uh, you need this for sure. Step three, skip step three. Uh, definitely grab one of those. Step four, grab the broiest whiskey you can find. Step five, Uncle Saul's glasses. Yeah, way better. That's way better. Okay, which one do you guys like? Bigger or smaller? <laughs> smaller.
These are the balanced outs I was telling you about. Sending a balanced signal is a surefire option for pros as balanced signal is protected from interference or humming. The goal is to send a clean balanced signal to the Atomos Shogun via its XLR breakout cable and burn the audio into the footage. We don't compromise on sound and we also don't sync and post. Pro tip number two, for messy cables you don't wanna solder, TY5 one inch braided cable sleeve. Let's talk monitor, LG 29 inch widescreen monitor. It's relatively cheap, super light, and has two HDMI ports so I can monitor from two cameras at the same time. Best of all, the power supply is 19 volts at 2.53 amps, which means we can use a laptop battery and make it portable. Bingo. Now, before we go any further, I should mention there's a small chance of a fire when you use a 12 volt rated cable with a 19 volt power source. Now, I don't have a laptop battery, but what I do have is a 50,000 milliamp battery bank. You guys remember this? but this is the battery bank that I will travel with. So this is a 50,000 milliamp battery bank. It has a 20 volt out, which is enough to power MacBook Pro for about six to seven hours when I'm full speed, full editing, processor heavy, burning through all that juice. Always match voltages. 19 volts is pretty close to 20, so I think it's within the tolerances. You guys want to see what we made? Check this out. Man, that cable management is clean. All right, I know what you're saying. This looks eerily similar to Caleb Pike's audio video thing. I don't think Caleb really cares. I mean, I don't really talk to him, but our wives are like best friends, so. Caleb, it was a great idea. How 
how do I afford all of those nice expensive tools? I mean guys, this is what I do for a living. I do videos every single day and I didn't start out this way. You know, we all start somewhere. I started out just like you with one camera, one lens and you know, slowly started building up a little tiny nest egg so I can afford these things. I will say one of the key ways that I do bring in supplemental income is by selling digital assets, things like color grades, sound design presets, and now I'm about to launch real estate tutorials. Squarespace makes it super easy for people like me and you to sell digital assets. With dozens of templates that are drag and drop, it's never been easier. Now here's my advice. It's meaningless doing great videos and making art unless you have something to sell behind it. All of this is a blend of art and commerce. And selling digital assets has been a path to financial freedom for me, so much so that I've been a paying customer of Squarespace since 2010. What I like about Squarespace is the templates have a built-in commerce structure. So you put in your asset, you connect your PayPal or Stripe, and bingo, you're done. Go to Squarespace today and get 10% off your first website by using the Make Art Now link below. Do it. In making this actual episode, while I was filming me building all of that, I was able to get really crispy audio using the Rode Video NTG and a 25 foot 3.5 millimeter cable running directly into the cameras. Yes, sound guys frown on it, but it can be done for much cheaper. Here's a little audio test so you guys can see the hiss that I'm talking about. This is what it sounds like with unbalanced right here. You guys hear that hiss? It's probably from that light right there. Now you guys hear the balance. This is balance XLR straight into the mixer with a super expensive mic. Uh, I make no apologies. It's, it's awesome. It's worth it. If you guys can afford the Sennheiser, definitely get it. Right? You guys see? Now you guys understand a little bit. Keep in mind, you don't need balanced if it's like under six feet. I think if it's under six feet, you can get away with it. This thing's 20 feet, picking up all sorts of interference, so that's why I used the balanced connection. Make sense? Anyway, this is Josh Yo saying thank you very much. Stay creative. Go make some art.